Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Pissed Up Ranch. Today I figured I'd do some mechanicing instead of, uh, and hot rodding instead of uh, body work and sanding and painting. It's part of the fact I got lots of that to still do. What we have here in front of me is a Ford 9 inch. The surefire way to tell it's a Ford 9 inch is I'm talking to you about it here on this channel. This particular unit um, is one that actually came in, um, under uh, the brown F100, the 54, yeah, the 54 F100. Um, this actual unit, we ran some numbers on it, and I will confirm that here when we run some more numbers on it. But this is uh, out of an early uh, 80s F150, or E150. Open differential, but I was just muscling it around a little bit, and uh, the spring perch with its bubblegum booger welds just popped right off. Which is fine, because it was set up as um, coil over, and we want to go coil, or it was set up as um, leaf spring over, and we want to do leaf spring under, we don't want to spring it under. So we got to pop these off anyways. Anyways. This video, I'm gonna go ahead and tear this thing down and prep it. We've already got a disc brake conversion kit for it. Um, figure out what gear, confirm what gears it is that are in it. And then um, start getting this thing ready to actually reinstall under flow, our, or excuse me, slow, our race truck. Okay, for the, Strength, nine inch rims are reasonably weighted. They're not terribly heavy. They're still heavy. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing apart. <coughs> These are special T-bolts that go in there. Fine thread. Okay. Bearing don't, bearing don't look bad. The um, seal seen better days. So this thing probably leaked oil out the side pretty bad. So might want to think about putting on new bearing and seal. This is the bearing and race is in here. We can look at that to see what kind of shape it's in. But bearing, seal, and retaining plate are all held in place by this uh, pressed on collar. So in order to put this stuff on, we've got to press that off and then all this comes off and we can put new stuff on. The old drum brakes is, that are basically all brand new, I mean even the cylinder's brand new, the whole assembly's brand new. The only thing original is the backing plate. It's just been sitting for a very long time. truck because by the 80s the 31 spot now as you can see we got a tag here and that tag if it is correct and the fact that it's bent up like this and not parallel like this means that this nut has been loosened if not completely taken apart you can see also RTV 
on it. So this center section has been removed, has been opened up. We definitely have an open um, differential. So we do not have a limited slip. Okay, we have the center section out. It is clearly by looking at it in here. Looking in here. Um, see the spider gears in there. That definitely tells it's, a, it's an open. They never will, you know, it's an open differential standard. And we have this information right here. Clearly see, or I don't know if you can, but I can clearly see a Ford stamp there. And we got this information here. And based upon that, we can figure out what ring and pinion that is. I believe that's the ratio there, 1339, which is a three to one ratio. Because the 13 is the number of teeth on the pinion, and 39 is the number of teeth on the ring. So that's a three to one. So, the housing, of course, having sat under a vehicle that probably leaked, and then, of course, since the wheel bearing seals leaked, um, it was suitably caked with lots and lots and lots of cack. So, I shot it a couple times with some engine degreaser, let it sit good and long, get good and loose, and then took some serious quality time with the... Uh, pressure washer to go ahead and knock all of that um, 30, 25, 30 years of accumulated crap and corruption. Now, I'm, you know, the axle housing itself is probably 35 years old, but um, I don't know, it might be closer to 40. It's 40 years old, let's say. But, you know, I assume it's been sitting for the last 20 years just holding up uh, the uh, back of the 54 Ford. Anyways, it needed a good cleaning, and cleaning this stuff up makes it a lot more pleasant to work on. Um, so take a minute, clean it up, yeah, you'll be a lot happier. Once uh, it was suitably cleaned up uh, and I thought it was good enough, um, I went ahead and got some uh, chassis black um, paint to go ahead and shoot everything and, you know, seal it up, paint over the, um, well, it's beginning to rust in a couple of plots. Not, no pitting or anything, just surface rust. Get it nice and clean. Get it nice. Okay. This dirty mess is, uh, is the axle uh, and the flange and everything. Here is the outer axle seal and bearing. Now, this is all held on using this collar here and it's all pressed together on this end of the axle, axle shaft. So, um, 
we're going to be going kind of fast in this vehicle. So we need to be as safe as possible. And we can't help but feel that this, uh, this bearing, though generally I think would be fine for like a road going vehicle, um, we want to upgrade it. And it's further, this seal is damaged. So there's a good chance that it's going to leak gear oil out the end of the flange uh, right into the brakes. So we've gone ahead and ordered up a new set of uh, bearings and a seal, but we need to get all of this off. And just like that, we got it. Cracked right there. As uh, while well, I was cutting it, I felt it go, but I wasn't too sure. But this time here, it went. So Okay, here's the housing, and this is at least half of the disc brake kit. Okay, so the kit we bought is set up for the different popular axle flanges. Uh, we have the large set, which I think that's what we got. And then we've got like a medium set and a small set. So, first thing these are spacers that take the place of the backing plate so they need to go on the end of the um, axle flange here between the two here i am test fitting the caliper holding plate onto the uh, flange attachment plate with some spacers um kind of an awkward setup but understandable and unfortunately i was the instructions were not clear on how many spacers were necessary in order to make this all work. So this is my first test fit of many. Now, when putting on the lug nuts to temporarily secure the disc, don't put a con conical side in like you would, um, you know, to hold the wheel on. You want to put the flat side in so you don't damage the face of the, the um, disc. You only need to put two on. Okay, the little spacer uh, plates um, interfered, the lower ones uh, interfered with the axle flange itself, bearing flange itself, so they had to be clearanced a little bit. Here we go with test fit number two. Any guesses on how well it went? The answer is we need all the spacers. Just don't exactly seem like the best design to me. But, you know, I know it's the challenge with doing a kit like this where one size fits all 
is uh, you end up doing stuff like this. Now conceivably we could just put a spacer like this in and move on but this doesn't won't support a lot of side load that you get with the brakes and I, I'm uncomfortable with that. I'd rather just stack up a whole pile of shims thick thick shims to get it than uh, that. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, this is promising. Okay. Okay. It took these spacers to get this, the caliper, to line up correctly so that it, well, it works. And there's room for the caliper to float on the pin like it needs to. And uh, that'll work. Um, it was hitting on the edge of the flange here. So I had to whittle on these two. And initially I whittled on this. Um, and I, don't ha I didn't have to. So, uh, good news on the side, just have a little whittling on the two thickest two of the two thickest shims and we're good to go and I'm pretty sure this uh, drum here is for something that has a um, e-brake drum e-brake and the rear disc and that's the reason why the hat the way it is is so set so far back they used a different rotor this stack of shims wouldn't be necessary. But they did, so who cares? That's the way it is. The other side is going to go together really quick now that we've did all the iterations we could on this side. We did almost all the iterations we could. Um, I just wish the instructions had been written a little clearer on this that this could happen. Instructions, though actually by far on the better end of the scale it's just they need to be updated to reflect the reality of the kit as opposed to how the kit was initially designed or intended well and there you go we have our nine inch now with disc brakes on it new wheel bearings and new seals and we've confirmed that it's an open differential with three to one which due to the nature of land speed racing is uh, our best guess is a good starting point um, it's uh, ready for us to figure out where the spring perches go and where the shock mounts will go and then the next step will be to get this thing set up in the chassis get all that stuff uh, set up uh, get the pinion angle correct, weld all that stuff on, and then bolt it on. Now, the truck currently has a leaf spring over configuration. We're going to be switching to the leaf, leaf spring under so that we can drop the truck, both the thickness diameter of the axle plus the thickness of the leaf uh, spring pack and the um, uh, side, how, how the standoff on the spring perch so overall probably a six to eight inch drop in the back uh, in doing so we're also gonna have to notch the frame so that's going to be an upcoming project on this uh, vehicle but we got the bolt-on uh, disc brake setup on Overall, I think it's a pretty decent kit. Bolt-on kits are never actually bolt-on. There's always some little minor fabrication that's involved. Again, it's a difference between the, um, the uh, what they did the prototyping on and the example you have. Uh, I also think that the instructions could use a little bit of updating. Uh, they're a little bit out of um, sync with the kit. 
Um, still very well written, very easy to understand. Overall, I think it's a uh, fairly decent kit. Uh, one that can be done in a solid afternoon. We figured out how to remove and replace uh, the wheel bearings. So, uh, first time I actually had to do that on a nine inch pre prior to this, uh, I used a set of custom axles with the wheel bearings already pressed on. The old wheel bearings were probably fine, but the uh, seals were completely trashed. It is it has no fluid in it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something. Definitely a worthwhile kit. Jags did a pretty good job on it. Um, I, everything's made in China. Uh, I, except for the wheel bearings. The wheel bearings were made in Japan. Um, yeah. Stamp of approval. Anyways, if you like this video, smash the like button. And if you want to support us here at the Pit Stop Ranch, and you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate uh, it, and uh, have a Garoyal-tastic day.